and welcome to Law Weekly on Channels Television. I am Shola Shoyeli. My guest on today's edition of the program is Chief Robert Clark, Senior Advocate of Nigeria. He needs no introduction and he's practiced law for about 40 years. I'll talk to him about the issues of the Bakasi, the legal state road traffic law, constitutional amendments and a host of other issues in the news. But first, let's take a quick look at the top stories in the news. We begin with the latest suit on the Dana Air crash. A federal high court sitting in Lagos last week admitted an affidavit by Dana Air, which supports the request of a non-governmental organization, Civil Aviation Roundtable Initiatives, seeking to stop the proceedings of a Lagos State Corona Court over the June 3rd air crash. Presiding Justice Okun Abang overruled an objection by counsel for the state, Mr. Akinjide Bakari that the rules of the court only permit a defendant like Dana to file a counter affidavit to a plaintiff's motion on notice and not an affidavit in support like the one filed by the airline. The plaintiffs, the NGO, and its president, Captain Deliore, had in their suits joined as defendants, Dana Air, with the coroner presiding over the inquest, Mr. Oyetari Kamalafe, the Lagos State Chief Coroner, Justice Latifa Okunu, the state's chief judge, Justice Ayo Phillips, and the attorney general of the state, Mr. Ade Paye. The other defendants are the Ministry of Aviation, the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority, NCAA, Accident Investigation Bureau, AIB, and the Nigerian Airspace Management Authority, NAMA. The judge also turned down Mr. Bakari's request to vacate the interim order restraining the continuation of the proceedings of the Corona Court. The plaintiffs, Captain Deliore and the NGO in the suit, are seeking an order of interlocutory injunction and an order nullifying the proceedings of the inquest as they insist that the coroner has no power to conduct an inquest into an air accident. The matter has been adjourned till the 13th of September for definite hearing. The legal state traffic law is still generating reactions. The latest is from the commercial motorcyclists, popularly called Okada riders, who last week dragged the state government to court over some parts of the road traffic law which restricts their operations on major highways across the state. The Okada riders, under the ages of all Nigerians' Autobike Commercial Owners and Workers Association, is seeking an order of court restraining the state government from prohibiting them from operating on the major highways listed in items 1 and 2 and other parts of Schedule 2 of the new traffic law. Through their lawyer, Mr. Bamidele Aturu, the claimants are also asking the court to restrain the state government from molesting, harassing, arresting, seizing their motorcycles or subjecting them to any treatment not suffered by any other road user. Joined in the suit alongside the Lagos State Government are the State Attorney General and Lagos State House of Assembly. The claimants also ask the court to declare that the new traffic law constitutes an unjustifiable violation of their right to freedom of movement of the claimants and their members guaranteed by sections 41 subsection 1 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999 as amended. They also ask the court to declare that the new law constitutes a violation of the defendant's means of livelihood as well as adequate opportunity to secure suitable employment provided for in section 17.3 subsection A. And the police in Lagos last week rearranged a female banker, Mrs. Yinka Johnson, who was initially accused to have killed an official of the Lagos State Traffic Management Authority, LASMA, amid Balogun, before an Ibushiri magistrate court in Lagos Island on a one-count charge of reckless driving. An earlier charge, which was drafted on the old Lagos State Road Traffic Law 2003, was substituted with the new Lagos State Road Traffic Law 2012. The new charge reads that you, Yinka Johnson, on the 10th of August 2012, at about 8.30 a.m. at Mega Chicken Ikotaja Expressway Lekki, Lagos, did drive your Land Rover Jeep with registration number CY276LSD on the highway recklessly by driving your vehicle against oncoming vehicle and without reasonable consideration for other road users and thereby committed an offense punishable under Section 7B of the Lagos State Road Traffic Law 2012. Mrs. Johnson pleaded not guilty to the charge. Attempts by her lawyer, Emeka Opoko, to argue that his client cannot be charged under the new traffic law as it is yet to be enforced, however, failed. 
The lawyer had submitted that various publications in national newspapers gave the impression that the law was yet to take effect, as government planned to carry out public enlightenment on it before implementation. The trial magistrate, Mr. Jacob Adegun, ruled that the prosecution has the right to substitute the charge under the law. After the arraignment, the police prosecutor informed the court that the Lagos State Director of Public Prosecution, DPP, has called for the case file and urged the court to adjourn the matter until the DPP gives further directives. Mrs. Yinka Johnson was, however, granted bail on the earlier conditions she already secured bail. Magistrate Adegun has adjourned the matter till the 28th of September 2012 for mention. In Edo State, the Governorship Election Tribunal, led by Justice Suleiman Ambrosa, last week commenced sitting over the petition by the People's Democratic Party PDP's governorship candidate in the July 14 election, Major General Charles Ahievere, challenging the re-election of Governor Adam Zoshiamale of the Action Congress of Nigeria, ACN. At the first sitting of the tribunal, Justice Ambrosa appealed for cooperation from members of the bar and the parties in the case. He said he and his other colleagues would not be intimidated in the discharge of their duties. The tribunal also struck out the name of the PDP from the petition, following a request by the PDP council that the party has since indicated its decision not to challenge the results of the election. Council to the PDP candidates has however said that this move will not negatively affect their case. Life has just got easier. You stay connected to Channels TV, where news and innovations are shaping our world. Simply log on to ChannelsTV.com to get the breaking news. Browse the homepage according to what matters to you. Tap on the extended coverage of business, sports, politics, lifestyle, infotech, entertainment, health, world news, and lots more. Click on the live link and see the news in real time want to watch the latest video of the day is just a click away. Friend us on Facebook, YouTube, follow us on Twitter, Google Plus, participate in Channels TV poll and share your comments. It's a website you can talk to. Your voice will be heard. ChannelsTV.com. The news at your fingertips. Joining me on the program now is Senior Advocate of Nigeria, Chief Robert Clark. Thank you for speaking with us, sir. My let's, pleasure always. Let's start with this issue of the handover of the disputed Bakasi Peninsula by Nigeria to Cameroon. It's just refused to go away. There's been so much comments about it, but what do you think that um, Nigeria can do about this issue? You see, as a lawyer, we have it as one of the doctrines of our profession that facts are secret. If you are not seized of the facts in any case, you cannot know the applicable law. It's when you are seized of the facts, we will be able to appreciate what applicable laws you can use. So let it be clear to all Nigerians, Bakasi has never belonged to Nigeria, and Nigeria never owned Bakasi. That is why it's good to go into a little bit of the history. Okay. Nigeria became Nigeria by the amalgamation of Nigeria Southern and Northern Protector in 1914. In 1914, the European countries who demarcated Africa in 1894 had not defeated Hitler. Hitler was defeated in 1918 in the First World War when Nigeria had already been created. Now, all the other European countries decided to seize all the African colonial countries of Germany. Cameroons, Togo, Tanzania, and all other places. And then divided these countries into two. Togo was divided into two. They gave Ghana and Togo, that is the French Togo, and the British Ghana, the British Gold Coast, in trust. Nigeria, Cameroon was divided into two. The French to, to look after one side, and Nigeria, Great Britain to look. So it was in after 1918 that half of Cameroon was joined to Nigeria. The northern side, the northeastern side, was called the Saudana province. 
The southeastern side, which is Bakasi, was joined with the old East Regional Government. Now, it is clear, therefore, that by 1914, at the amalgamation of Nigeria, Bakasi was not part. Bakasi only became after 1918, during the disintegration of German Empire. So, that is clear. Now, the Soviet General's map for Nigeria in 1914 is in the archives of the British uh, government. They have a copy of it. When they created Nigeria, the Soviet of Nigeria was there. That is the Soviet plan that Cameroons took to the world uh, court to show that Nigeria was, which is true. To show that Nigeria, Cameroon, was not But well, never Nigeria. when Nigeria was created in 1914. Okay. And this, these facts were well known to many Nigerian officials. Unfortunately, again, in 1960, when Nigeria was gaining independence, there was a top Cameroon official in the Soviet General's office who was aware of all these things. So when he went to Cameroon's back, he became the Soviet General for Cameroons, and they started the agitation. When they started, now, we now were in the civil war. So Gawan said, look, we don't want to fight you over land. We are already fighting a civil war. Okay, what I can agree with you, let us divide Bakasi into two. That was the former head of state. Yeah, Jakubu Gawa, and he's still alive today. Let us divide Bakasi into two. We will keep this side, you keep this side. When we finish our civil war, let us sit down a round table and decide which area belongs to you, which belongs to us. So that was the settlement Gawan had in 67 or 68. Unfortunately, he was thrown away by Ku. Muritala, Dimka, Ku came in, so nothing was done. In 1979, the civilian government came in, and Akinjide became the Attorney General. They became the Attorney General. So the Bakasi issue started again, and they were negotiating under the under Shagari. Okay. But no agreement was reached on it because typical way of doing things in Nigeria, we all believe we owned it. Whereas, as I said, as lawyers, if we have looked at the facts, we will have known we did not own it. So our attitude will have been different because 80% of uh, Bakasi people are Nigerians. We can defend it by force. So knowing fully well that we do not own it, we should not have subscribed to going to the World Court for adjudication because once we go there and we have ratified the treaty, we are bound by the decision. Now, again, Shagari government left away. Abacha, with due respect to him, wanted, said nobody can take Bakasi from Nigeria. He was ready to fight to restore. But again, he sought good advice from some people, in quote, who told him that, look, don't fight this thing. The records show Nigeria does not own it. But instead of going to the court, call them, let us find what economic uh, interest we can, you know, defend. But lo and behold, those who wanted to go to the court, believing that Nigeria has a judge, Ajibola, there, believing that uh, in the old way of doing things in Nigeria, we can manufacture judgments, decided to spend a colossal sum of money paying foreign lawyers and Nigerian lawyers, and went and disgraced herself in, uh, uh, in the court. Now, fortunately, you have to give credit to Obasanjo. After the judgment, we discovered there was nothing we could do, and Obasanjo realized it, good to him. So he now settled with them and said, okay, Nigeria has invested so much in Bakasi, in manpower, in money, in this. Okay, let us draw up an agreement for us to have an economic interest for the next 20 years. And that is what Obasanjo achieved for us. When he was president. <laughs> Therefore, question of even not accepting the judgment no longer arises, because we have accepted it, and our president has committed to the acceptance and has taken steps to implement certain economic decisions to our advantage over it. So in law, we are stopped for even talking about it again. There are those who say that the um, Green Tree Agreement cannot be legally binding on Nigeria because the National Assembly has refused to ratify the agreement and that there's even the option of appeal of the uh, judgments of the World Courts. What, what do you make of this? What are the solutions that you would advise going forward? It's just like a lawyer telling you he wants to appeal against the judgment of the Supreme Court. Under the charter of the World Court, what you have is a review of the judgment, not an appeal. A review is allowed within a period of 10 years. 
And the basis of the review are three. If one, you can show the court that the judgment was obtained by fraudulent means, it will be set aside. If you can show the court that there were certain mistakes surrounding the district, okay, the oh, yeah, to be said that they will. Okay. Or if you have discovered certain new facts which were in existence when the case was going on, but which you were not aware as a country, you can bring it up. But outside those three, that judgment is not appellable. It cannot be set aside. And, and now, now, none of these issues, none of these issues none of these are very enough. There's nothing. The facts are clear that we never owned it. What legal remedies are available to the people of Bakasi instead of this armed struggle option that they have chosen to embark on? The point is this. You know Sao Tome. You know Fernando Po. You know Equatorial Guinea. These were different countries from Nigeria where people from Eastern origin in Nigeria migrated. Let me give you a clear example. I think in Equatorial Guinea, one of their former president was a Nigerian whose grandfather emigrated there. But today, because there are so many Igbos in Equatorial Guinea or in Fernando Po or in Sao Tome, therefore Nigeria wants to claim sovereignty. No. Any Nigerian who finds himself in a foreign country must submit to the rules of that country. If they are not satisfied, let them come back, then we'll resettle them here. That is just it. Bakasi belongs to Cameroon. They are not Cameroonians. They are Nigerians who are residing in the Cameroon territory. If they don't want to submit themselves to the rights and privileges of that, then they have the right to come back. Their country will take them back. But there's nothing this country can do. I will ask Nigerians to accept the truth that Bakasi does not belong to us. Accept the fact that Obasanjo has committed Nigeria to an economic interest for the next 20 years. Build on that and see after the 20 years to renew the agreement and have the economic benefits instead of rushing to claim a land that does not belong to you. Let's move on to this issue of a constitutional amendment. The, during the week, the president met with the civil society organizations and professional bodies, and they've made all sorts of contributions, and which is to be passed on to the National Assembly. But it seems that the debate has boiled down to federalism and the issue of state police. What, what do you think you know, about all these issues? To be honest with you, the danger of piecemeal amendments, as it's been done in Nigeria, is going to create confusion in the future. A constitution is meant to be the Bible or the Quran or the chronom of a country, which is what the people, the generality of the people, have agreed to accept as the document that will govern their lives. When you now find that the first document, which is imperfect, was not the brainchild of the people, but was imposed on them. Now, this new exercise they are now doing is the same thing. Because how can a group of people, most of them claim they have been elected, will now be touching the... Cons Look, America, for the past 200 years, have only amended their constitution 23 times. Now, I don't know how many amendments are coming in now, but I believe by the time the constitution is about... Uh, it's 12 years old now, or 11 years old. By the time it's 20 years old, we will have done maybe 200 uh, amendments. That is not the way to go to it. What I would suggest is whatever amendments, let it be brought to the National Assembly and say, we have looked at the, uh, these amendments. I think they will benefit the people. Let us send it as a referendum to the people. Let them now say, do you want these amendments or you don't? At that stage, the voice of the people will be heard. Then we will be proud when we read our constitution to say, we the people of Nigeria. But we can't say that now. We can't say that because now. Not had any input. We have no input. So the way they are going, I can tell you, is going to cause confusion in the future. When you have state police and you have 36 states and you have governors, you see, I was joking with my good friend, uh, Obasanjo, one day, and he was bold enough to tell, and he taught me that. He said, under Section 5 of the Nigerian Constitution, the president, you know, is empowered to exercise all executive powers, and that the only powers he will not exercise is enjoined to give it to ministers. 
And even before they can exercise it, they must go to the National Assembly to be clinically, I'm using this language, clinically examined to see whether the people who gave him this power by voting him, they can now, he can delegate it to them. The same thing with governors. Once a governor assumes executive powers in the state, the police comes under him. And we see what is going on in night. We are not ripe for governors even to control local governments, we know what is happening. The arbitrariness of the governor's powers. Not to come and now add the police, it will disintegrate this country. Let us go step by step. All these amendments are not what we need now. It's how to put food on the table for the common man. How you and I can wake up and not be afraid of any area boy kidnapping us in the main road or asking us for this. These are the things that you and I as average Nigerians need now. We don't need a separate police force where a governor will now uh, put the police force on that. Maybe you people didn't grow up when we grew up when the native authority police were in the north. When we were young, there is the Nigerian police, there is the native authority police where the alkali will call a native authority policeman, go and arrest somebody and the police won't be able to. So don't let us go into that area. But as I said, there's nothing wrong in doing amendments. But please, when you do it, bring it to the National Assembly. Let them pass it. Give it to Mr. President. Let him assent to it. Then send it to a referendum. You Nigerians, this is what we have for you. Do you want it? Say yes. If you don't want it, say no. It is then they will be proud when it comes back to them to pass it as a law. Okay. Another issue that has been in the news is the uh, Dana Air crash. We heard during the course of the week that the federal government returned the license of Dana Air back you know, to the airline. And there are those who have issues with that. In fact, some people say that in the first place, the federal government should not have seized the license of Dana or suspended them. But having done that, which was in contravention of ICAO standards, that it is now wrong for the federal government to give back the license when compensation has not been paid, some of the dead bodies uh, of victims have not been claimed. And, you know, what do you make of all of these issues? Let us have one matter clear. When you use the word federal government, you are using it in its general terms. Because today, what makes the government of Nigeria is the executive, the legislative, and uh, the judiciary. But when you talk that government revokes license, government does it through the agency it has created under its executive powers through the Minister of Aviation so to do. So, as I told you, Obasanjo just says, look, I have all the executive powers invested on me the day I was elected. So Jonathan has that power also the day he was elected under Section 5 of the Constitution to control all executive powers. But where there is a statute that provides the way and manner such powers like petroleum, the petroleum is a, it's the same thing in aviation. So when you talk that the government revokes, it is not the presidency that is revoking. It is the Minister of Aviation by virtue of the power vested on him under the Aviation Act. Now the question is, does he have the power? He has the power, but it is the way and manner they are using the power in Nigeria that is wrong. Within the past three years, over six planes have crashed in Russia. Over three or four planes have crashed in France, in England. Yeah. But do they, because of one crash, close down the total airline? No. The problem in Nigeria is that they use this fire brigade tactics. What they should have been doing under the law, monitoring what planes come in when they go, they were not doing it. So that when they are cutting edges, Oyimbo Man says they like to cut edges. When they start cutting edges and at the end there is a crash, then they will now, that airline, or, for instance, the, uh, Air Nigeria, I was going to Abuja last week, four or five of their planes were on the tarmac. They can't fly. Uh, Dana can't fly. Uh, One Nation, I don't know, they can't fly. Just because of that crash. Do you know how much this country is losing every day with those planes? Being grounded. 
being grounded. Do you know how we are suffering? I went to Abuja last Friday to come back. I wanted to come back in the morning. I could not get a flight on the, the evening. And I was speaking on Thursday. Do you know how much man hour is being lost? When there is a plane crash, that doesn't mean you should close down the entire uh, air fleet. No. You will do your investigations. You will check has the agency been doing its duty to make sure that these planes go for servicing? Why do they have to wait until they crash before they ground all day? There's something is wrong with the system. So the federal government has the power. Don't let anybody bamboozle you because executive powers belong to the federal government and the way they exercise it is guided by law. The, the only thing they must follow due process. But when they carry it to the extreme, it means something is wrong with the system. But he's And that has been my interview with Chief Robert Clark, Senior Advocate of Nigeria. As always, we'd like to hear from you. Please send in your comments and questions via email, Facebook, or Twitter. The addresses are on the screen. I'm Shola Sheyeli. See you next week.